Yo, 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 how you living, how you feeling, how you doing? It's First Choice Fantasy, we are back today. My name's Ed, upstairs to me, or wherever the hell Brandon situates the boxes, that's Brandon. Here I am, probably over to the right. Probably over to the right, good, that's good. Um, Alex is not here today, man has come down with a sickness that is not the COVID. That's a good thing, but it's a bad thing at the same time, but it's a positive negative, so we'll make out without him, make out without him. Whew. All right, <laughs> questionable. But today we got the uh, quarterback start sits for week five of the NFL. The first week with bye weeks that are scheduled. So uh, we'll see how this goes. Um, we're going to say Alex's start sits for this week as he's not going to be able to make it for the entirety of the week. So um, starting off, we're doing quarterbacks. One start, one sit each. Um, I'm going to go first. My start is Kirk Cousins against the Seattle Seahawks. I think the Seahawks secondary, as do many people, think the Seattle Seahawks secondary is pretty poopy. Uh, Kirk Cousins has two of the top five graded PFF wide receivers in Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen, like I said, from PFF. Um, Kirk Cousins, though, he hasn't seemed all that well for the first four weeks of the year. Um, he has two great weapons, like I said, from Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen. Even Dalvin Cook on that offense is pretty powerful, but I think Kirk Cousins gets the job done. Um, he's a streaming quarterback this week, obviously. I don't think you have him rostered, and if you do, start him against Seattle and expect – a good quarterback uh, start this week. I'm not sure he's going to put up like 30 points, but uh, an average 20 points, I can I can see that happening from Kirk Cousins. Uh, what do you got to say, Brandon? Well, if, if the Vikings want any chance of winning that game, Kirk Cousins is going to have to perform. And, I mean, it's a game where Cousins should be able to perform, like you said. Uh, Seattle's defense is dookie. So... Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's it's a pretty good uh, matchup for him. And like you said, those two wide receivers seem to be performing pretty flawlessly right now. Pretty flawlessly. And not to mention, Irv Smith has yet to really get involved. And I think yeah. he's one of the better talented tight ends in the league. Um, I just – Kirk Cousins needs to, get, needs to get that passing volume in the offense up. Obviously, it's not on him, but it's on the play calling. But once he does get that volume up, he'll be a viable starting quarterback in fantasy for a couple of weeks, but this week in particular, I think he'll be up there. Yeah, I could see that. For me, I've got uh, Justin Herbert as my start of the week uh, against New Orleans. This defense, it's, it's kind of the same uh, reasoning as what you had said, Ed, about Seattle's. New Orleans defense, uh, I'm – I mean, statistically, I don't, I'm, I don't know for sure, but I think New Orleans defense is probably better. But uh, Justin Herbert has performed against some pretty stout defenses. He, I mean, last week against the Buccaneers, he went 25 for 20, almost reached 300 yards for the third uh, like career start that he had so that's pretty impressive for a rookie and just watching film of Justin Herbert he looks pretty good for a rookie and Keenan Allen uh Hunter Henry well Hunter Henry just a shout out for the uh tight end starts you might you might hear his name uh but these are weapons that I think Herbert's going to connect with, especially now after Austin Eckler is out. They're going to rely heavily on this talented rookie. I agree. Well, I'm not too sure his uh, efficiency is going to be there just because of the fact that um, Eckler is out, so it might take away a few of those you know, yak plays from Eckler and whatnot. He's still going to have Keenan Allen, Hunter Henry, people like that. He even connected with Jalen Guyton, I think, this past week, 72-yard touchdown. Yeah. Some dude named Johnson, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. I think. I think. Week, I think. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. He was. He was looking pretty. Uh, pretty great. I think. I think he has rushing upside, obviously, as well, because he's very mobile. And yeah. I think he can get a lot of it done this week against New Orleans. So, I like that. Um, Alex has Daniel Jones against uh, Dallas as his start of the week. His note was: Do I really have to explain this one? Maybe the best streaming option, and I apologize in advance when he only gets 15 points. 
So uh, shout out to Alex. I do like this pick. I, um, what's his name? Alex created this document before I looked at it. And then when he shared it with me and I looked at it, I was planning on using Daniel Jones as my start and Darius Slayton as my start. But that's two of Alex's starts, just to give a little sneak peek in the future if you're curious. But, um, yeah, Kirk, Kirk Cousins, Justin Herbert, Daniel Jones, those are the three quarterback starts of week five for us three. Um, moving forward, do you have anything else to say about Daniel Jones, Brandon, or no? Daniel Jones, no. I will say, though, I expected – better from Jones this year. Uh, I was thinking Jason Garrett coming there. I mean, I know Jason Garrett, Jason Garrett, but uh, he's had experiences with, like, dra- uh, lower-drafted quarterbacks and making those quarterbacks good, or maybe they were just good to begin with and just fell during the draft. But Daniel Jones was a top draft pick. So I was thinking, oh, who knows what Garrett could do with him. If he has done anything right in his coaching career, I mean, quarterbacks he's had success with. And so far this season, he's, he's just done very poor. And for me, as of right now, this is probably the best matchup of the season for Daniel Jones. So I think uh, if this isn't a time to start him, why do you have him on your roster? So I think uh, Daniel Jones last year, obviously showed his like lottery ticket potential, I guess you could say, because he had a few uh, 30 plus point games. I think he has the mobility to get you some points on the ground. And I believe this is going to be one of those game scripts where he's found himself in for the majority of the season, obviously being zero wins. Um, but I do believe after those first four few rough games that he had, I many people in the offseason expected Daniel Jones to really have a struggle in the beginning of the season. He, they met People like Matthew Barry told you not to draft him. Uh, they did tell you to trade for him, though. So I think Daniel Jones is a viable start week five, and I think in the future he may also be a viable start. And, uh, yeah, I like this start this week, and future outlook for Daniel Jones is looking brighter than the first four games where he only had two touchdowns in the first four games. Hasn't had a touchdown since week one as well, which is actually ugly. But moving forward to uh, ugly quarterbacks, hate to say it. I mean, I mean it like starting wise in fantasy. Carson Wentz is the sit of the week for me uh, against Pittsburgh. That front four, the pass rush is going to get to him. Is going to make him feel all you know. Got, he's going to be confused. He's going to be indecisive. That's what Carson Wentz does. Um, his mind's going to be all boggled up. He might not be able to get a pass off, and if he does, he's going to get it to Travis Fulham. I don't know. The dude who got a touchdown this past week for the Eagles <laughs> really drove me crazy, the fact that the Eagles won. I didn't think it was going to happen. I'm an Eagles fan, but I was really hoping that 49ers would be the touchdown on the last drive. I'm not going to lie to you. I thought it was kind of uh, unfortunate because I don't – the Eagles as a whole just – they don't – they've rubbed me the wrong way for that purpose. I'm going to sit Carson Wentz against this pit defense, which is pretty stellar. Um, and the lackluster weapons that Carson Wentz has to use against Pittsburgh is not really going to help him do much. So, uh, the sit of the week for me, quarterback. Yeah, Wentz is a sit in my books, too. He was one of the quarterbacks I was looking at before opening up this dock, and uh, you beat me to him. So, I kind of picked up uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick. Similar to Carson Wentz, he both these quarterbacks quarterbacks kind of have a rushing ability. Uh, they're not going to go crazy on you like Lamar Jackson or whatever. But I mean, they both past two weeks has had pretty uh, nine game attempt nine attempts for week three and seven in week four for Wentz. And then seven for week three for Jacksonville and six in uh, week four against Seattle. And to to me, that's important, a rushing quarterback. However, uh, matchup-wise, like you said, uh, 49ers has that same type of defensive front, even without Bosa, in my opinion. I think they're going to beat up on a – poor offensive line 
But I don't think Ryan Fitzpatrick's going to have a great week. He's going to be a sit. He's performed for the past three weeks pretty fairly, putting up 24 points two weeks, 23 in last week. But uh, this week, I think the the genre is going to be a little different. I uh, I respect it. While I'm not high on Fitzpatrick, I also don't think he's going to do like 12 points. I can see him putting up like 15 points, which uh, I guess you consider a sit still because that would be zero points on our scoring system, which we didn't go over at the beginning. Um, just if anybody's here and still listening, Brandon finished last week with a plus 10. So he's finished. He's his running total in the year is plus 11. Uh, Alex's last week was plus one. He's sitting at minus three total. I had a minus two and I'm sitting at a rough minus 14. But uh, yeah, that was a scoreboard for our start sits this year. But getting back on track. Baker Mayfield is uh, Alex's sit of the week. Um, his notes he has, they say, it's the Colts defense and Baker Mayfield, the immovable object against a very stoppable force. So, uh, yeah, very self self-descriptive right there. I agree with Alex because, I mean, I don't think Baker Mayfield's really had a startable week so far. He's had over 200 passing yards once on the season. Um, even when he had 39 pass attempts week one, he only had 189 yards, and he had one touchdown, one interception. Uh, 10, 16, 14, and 15, those are his fantasy point performances from weeks one to four. Doesn't really have much upside, not many yards. He hits two touchdowns for the past three games, but that doesn't do much, obviously, having 16, 14, and 15. And uh, I think it might be uh, might be shot to say this, but I think it's a cop-out on Alex's part. I really do. I think it's a oh. cop-out. I don't know if Baker Mayfield sitting is really that bold of a take. And for a position in which there are 32 players, um, I guess you really don't have much room to do here and there to take somebody from over here and sit them and whatnot. But still think it's a cop out. I like the pick, but very uh, simple, simple pick. Yeah. The Colts defense has been pretty stout this year so far. Yeah. Too, so. All right. Well, I guess that books the uh, quarterback start sits for five. Leave your comments downstairs in the comments section, whether you need to start this player, sit that quarterback, uh, up to you guys. Just let us know down in the comments. Like, share, and uh, tell your friends, subscribe to us. Subscribe to us while you're here as well. Uh, we got running backs coming up next, so uh, stay tuned. Thank you. All right. Later. <laughs>